Well, good morning. That's your cue that it's a good time to find a seat. I love the spirit of fellowship. So we're going to do this one more time. Good morning, church. Morning. morning. If you feel bad, don't worry. That's the pastor's spouse right there slowly making his way to his seat. No worries. So glad for you to join us in worship this morning. I'm Pastor Katie. I am the pastor here and I am really honored to be joined in worship this morning with someone who I think not only is a wise mentor, but a very good friend. And so we welcome Pastor Ivan James this morning to worship with us. And with that, we welcome our sibling churches, Samaritan and Asbury as well to worship. I will let you know that I have a little bet going. If Pastor Ivan makes fun of me less than four times in the sermon, I'm going to be disappointed. So I expect, <laughs> I expect there is going to be some joy and some wonderful words from the Lord with us today. I want to especially welcome everyone who is joining us online this morning for worship. Welcome, we're so glad that you've joined us. I'm gonna invite you if you'd like, feel free to comment on Facebook, let us know you're here, and also let us know any prayer requests that you may have. We'd love to um, add any names of people who are on your heart to our prayer list, so you can do all of that through Facebook. I also want to let you know this week was moving week. So I'm going to ask a little bit of grace as you're walking around the church. You may notice that as we continue for two to become one, and we're in this merger process, that one, thank you to everyone who has been helping out with all of the work that comes with that. But it means things are a little out of sorts this week, but that's okay, right? It's just like our lives. Sometimes things get a little out of sorts, but we'll be okay, amen? So this worship service today actually began the Sunday before Juneteenth. We're culminating it today with the celebration of freedom and fellowship. And we are going to close it off like all good Methodists do. And we're going to eat together after church. Amen. There, right? <laughs> so after worship, we are going to have boxed lunches all ready for you to take. Go outside, find a nice grassy area. We'll have some chairs set up. And let's continue to worship and fellowship together with some fantastic barbecued chicken from what I hear. It's going to be lovely. So with that, as you are able and comfortable, I'm going to invite you to stand as we call one another to worship. The Lord our God is great. The Lord is worthy of our praise. Come on, let us remember the great things God has done for us. Let us not neglect to teach our children the greatness of God. Let us not forget our past and those who have gone before us. We remember our ancestors, our history, and name our future. Let us lift up our voices in song, lift our arms in praise, and open our hearts in gratitude. Let us greet God with our hymn of praise this morning. Oh, 
As we come to God in this time of worship, we turn our hearts and minds to a time of prayer that we do both in song, in word, and in silence. So I'm gonna invite you to follow along in your bulletin as we go to God in prayer, lifting up all that we have brought this morning. Let us pray. typical citizens of the United States, let us repent both the individual and corporate evil that has afflicted us during this century. Loving God, friend, and Savior, we confess the sins which have infected and blighted our lifestyle and alienated us from each other and from you. We repent the racism, sometimes open, sometimes furtive, which has increased the loneliness and misery of minority groups. We confess our reluctance to understand or alleviate the pain of indigenous people. We repent of the massacres which took place early in this century and present day systematic racism and injustices that still exist. We repent our ignorant and at times willful abuse of the land and its creatures and our despoiling of the soil, air, and water. We confess the destruction of forests, depletion of the ozone layer, extinction of unique animals, salination of large tracts of land, and pollution of river systems. We repent our apathy and sometimes scorn towards the unemployed and the unemployable. We confess the sin of condemning youth to frustration and futility or discarding loyal employees in their 50s. We repent our slide into opinion poll morality, the cult of self-indulgence and taxation by casino and poker machine. We confess the politics of expediency the lack of prophetic courage, the use of media for mass lying. We confess a legal system that favors the rich and a church culture which favors the respectable. We repent our neglect of prayer, scripture, social justice, evangelism, and our reluctance to make friends among the disreputable for Christ's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My country sides are bluer than the ocean.
Holy God, we come to you on this national holiday. And God, we pray for the day to come when your kingdom will come, your will will be done, and we can truly be a land at peace. For all of those who have offered their lives and their service towards making this country a better place, we give you thanks, O oh God. We lift up the hearts of all of the mothers and fathers who have lost their children in the name of this country's work, and we pray for their grief. God, we know that there is still great work to do, and it begins right here in our neighborhood, in our schools, in Skinker Oliver, in this city. But God, we thank you that we do not do this work alone, that your spirit has been with us since the very beginning, and you will continue to guide us. God, we thank you for all of those who serve and who speak, who work towards unity and truth and justice, for all of those who have given their lives in service. God, thank you. But may you continue to guide all of those in leadership, not only in our country, but also here in our church as we enter this next chapter of our story. God, we have so much that is unknown, so much that we have to learn from each other. And so God, as we continue to listen, to love, to build relationships, may this continue to be the seed that pours out the spark that begins to bring that same unity and healing and oneness to this neighborhood that we love so dearly. So God, we ask, Holy Spirit, above all, that you guide us. Guide us each and every day in the words that we say, in the conversations we have with the people that we meet. Lord, guide us and all will be well. We lift this up to you as we pray together as one family united under the love of Jesus Christ as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every week in worship, we do an affirmation of faith, but this Sunday is a special one. And so our affirmation of faith is actually a blessing for our children. I'm going to invite you to follow along in your bulletin as we say it together. I did trick you. So you got to do it now. Running, jumping, falling, laughing, singing, dancing, climbing, our children or our joy. Today we are all children gathered to praise and worship you, loving God. Rolling, smiling, hugging, shouting, crying, cheering, painting, doodling, drawing, our children or our joy. 
Today we are all children of God, gathered to bless our children. Today we pause to let them know how much we love them. We pause to remind ourselves of our promise to them, to guard, guide, and defend them, to protect them from danger, seen and unseen, to live holy lives in front of them, to never stop trying to be spiritually alive, members of the church and ambassadors for Christ everywhere we go. Now let us pray together. Loving, Loving God, bless us that we may be blessing to our children. Help us to remember who we are and from where we have come. Help us to remember the things you have done for us in the past so we can teach them to our children. May we give them hope and enthusiasm for the future. May we give them openness to your holy message of forgiveness, grace, and love. May they too want to walk in the paths of righteousness. May your word live in them and for generations to come. Hear this prayer we offer today. Amen. Amen. And it is with great joy I invite up the mother and father of our special guests today, Anna and Trey Barrow, and of course, godmother Chloe. Come on up. I've been waiting for this. Hi. You know, you have been born into a long line of family members who love Jesus and I know who love you. And I remember the day that we buried your great grandma and what a woman of pride and joy she was. And I remember every time your grandma took me out to lunch as the new pastor in town. And I remember the day that I married your mommy and your daddy. And now I get to baptize you. And you are going into a great, great <laughs> legacy. I know. And you are loved and you are cherished. Come here. I got you. I got you. You know, church, our merger became official July 1. And I thought there is no better way for us to celebrate than to have this symbol of hope, right? The first thing we're going to do as a church united is remember that we are a church for the next generation. Yes, we are. And you, little man, you got a passy? Oh, yeah. I know how this works, buddy. I know how this works. You are our reminder of all that is ahead of us and the work that is to come. And you know what? Sometimes church makes me feel that way too, but it's okay. It's okay. But remember this, church. This is why we did all that hard work. This is why we went through all those tough conversations. Because we've got a future. And he's right here. He's perfect. <laughs> and there will be many more to come. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. Yes, we are. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all of this is a gift offered to us without price. So on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, parents and godmother, do you announce... No, it's not your turn yet. It's their turn first, okay? Oh, you're just fine. Oh. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, 
Promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. Will you nurture this beautiful little man in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to leave a Christian life? If so, answer, I will. Ivan, I wasn't watching. Did they say yes? Okay, good. <laughs> they did say okay. You know what? They were quiet at their wedding, too. I had to make them shout out their vows as well. Yeah, yeah. Church, I have a question for you now in your bulletin. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life? And now will you include this little man before you into your care? Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the waters of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit, bless this gift of water and those who will receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in the righteousness through their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All right, this is, we're gonna tag team this. You get to hold that piece as I come down here. Take your, take your time now. Happy. What name do you give this child? All right, Cade, you ready? Cade, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Oh yeah. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, yes. May God bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And may you never forget how much God loves you. Okay, we did it. We did it. Now, church, I would love for you to be part of this. We're going to sing a blessing over this little man. So if you look in your bulletin, we've got the first two verses we're going to sing. And I will walk them around so you can meet on your This was my first baptism of grace. I figured out it's a little farther to walk and make the loop. All right, I'm learning. I'm learning. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Will you pray with me in your bulletin? Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Now he's asleep, so if I should keep him.
we do a baptism every week? I love this. Our scripture this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43. This is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and cannot get up. They're snuffed out like candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Do you see it? There it is, I'm making a road through the desert and rivers through the badlands. And wild animals will say thank you because I provided for them. I have made a people, especially for myself, a people made for praise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In response, let us sing together. I think we can do a little better than that. I'm not real sure. 
I'm not real sure. I think we can do just a little bit better than that. I've, I've, I've heard louder than that before service starts, so let's try that again. <laughs> Some of y'all are screaming from the back of the church back there. Good morning. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You know, we got a chance to be something real special. Real, real special. But it's like we have that chance as Christians to be real special. That song brings back many memories to me. And, and uh, I, I, I just think that if you listen to the words and just to the, the verse itself, Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, freedom over me. And before I will be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord to be free and to be free. Those are powerful words. And even when they wrote this book, The Faith We Sing, they recognize the powerfulness of those, those words. And on this day where we come together, we, we recognize the power of, of what is going on in our world today and what is happening right here in our own community. And every day, every day is something different and something trying and, 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 and through it all, through it all, we, we learn to love and trust Jesus. We learn to, to trust God. Now I'm not real, real, real expert at preaching at, 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 in this sort of audience. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, but I do have to have some type of response uh, when I say something, even if it's wrong, uh, you need to do some type of response, response. So when I make a good point, I got to have an amen corner. And so what we're going to do, we're going to start over here. And when I point to you folks over here, you're my amen corner. And when I point to you folks over here, you're my amen corner. And you down the middle, if you're on the side of the aisle, uh, y'all going to have to move over. Y'all going to have to get off. Y'all right in the middle there. If you're on this side of the aisle, you go with this amen. And if you go on this side of the aisle, you go with that amen. Uh, you got it? Amen. Y'all got work to do. Y'all do too. Don't be laughing. Y'all do too. I, I thank uh, Reverend Katie uh, and the Grace United Methodist Church congregation for inviting us here this morning to worship. Uh, you know, we, uh, over the last year, we have been doing some, some very exciting and some pretty good, had some pretty good encounters. But we never had a chance uh, to worship together, to praise God uh, together. And, and I am delighted that I have this opportunity today. And, and I just hope and pray that this is just many, many more of these types of activities where we can come together as children of God uh, to worship God and do God's work. Amen. Amen. I also want to commend the, 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 the social justice uh, committee, and y'all know who you are, who arranged this unique way of celebrating this all important uh, his, uh, uh, event in, in, in our history. Because the impact that Juneteenth made in our country, good or bad, is still with us. And it was so effective that uh, this year we uh, 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 had the opportunity to, to celebrate the first Juneteenth uh, holiday. And for that, I think we also need to say, Amen. When asked to bring this message this morning on this historical event right here, and I'm not necessarily talking about Juneteenth, but this historical event, I thought about what I was going to say, and I thought about first I was going to talk about about CRT and anybody who's been reading the news understand that it's called critical uh, uh, race theory. But after most, a lot of soul searching and, and praying, I decided not to. And I did for, for two reasons. The first reason is that CRT is not a good topic for a celebration of this sort. 
Now notice I didn't say it's not a good topic for the church. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not a good topic for this situation today. And secondly, that I don't know y'all real well. <laughs> and I know that I sometimes get myself in trouble with my mouth. Amen. So, <laughs> look here, I didn't, I didn't sign you to a corner, all right? I don't need to sign you to a corner, all right? Okay? I'll all right, you better hear yourself. You okay. Took me off my track, man. <laughs> the reason I did that, I gotta get back on track. I didn't do it secondly because of the fact that, that because I, I, I do get in trouble sometimes uh, with my mouth. And, and, and I don't want y'all to be mad at me uh, because if you got mad at me, then you wouldn't invite me back. And I do want to come back. And I hope we have many opportunities for that. I didn't even have to show y'all that time. Y'all are getting pretty good here. I, 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 I um, got to set this up here. And somebody said, why, why, he, why does he put this, his watch up there, this, this, this time clock on there? Well, you know, when a Methodist preacher put a, put a time clock, it don't mean nothing at all. <laughs> so don't get excited. I, you know, we're going to be real short. It don't mean nothing at all. You know, God is everywhere, friends. He's here right now. Reminds me of the story many of you might have heard before is that uh, my mother one time told me to go out and, 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 and mop the kitchen because I'd been bad. And she told me to go out on the porch. Some of y'all don't know what the porch is. Go out on the porch and get the, 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 the mop in the bucket. It was at nighttime and I said, Mama, I, I can't go out there at night because it's dark. She said, don't worry about it, son. God, He'll be with you. He's everywhere. And I said to her, well, mama, if God is everywhere, why don't you tell him to bring the mop and bucket in here? <laughs> now, that was being a little bit disrespectful. But at the same time, uh, I tell you, my mouth sometimes gets me in trouble. Without going into a lot of theory and details, I want you to know that I don't think any of you, any of you in, in this room were around when the systematic uh, and systemic racism, uh, the inequality and, 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 and the in inhumanity towards human beings uh, had its roots in, in, in this country. But I do know, however, that uh, we have, all of us, experiencing the after fact of that. I do know, however, know that, that uh, uh, we also have suffered, all of us, because of those three things I mentioned. But I also know that as children of God, uh, we have a responsibility to help fix it. We can't be blamed for the mess we're in, but we can be held accountable for how we react and that we not become and be part of the continuation of the mess, but rather we become a part of solving the problem. We cannot sit on the sidelines and see it get worser. But you all don't know me well, I do make up words. <laughs> and worser means badder than bad. It is worse, worser is worse than worse. And we don't want to be part of the worser. My message this morning is entitled, Now What? A New Thing. But the yet, the best is yet to come. To me, the now what is that we as collective children of God should take advantage of the opportunities we have to respond to the things that God is doing a new thing. The scripture said that God is doing a new thing. Can you see it? God is here today doing a new thing. 
I truly believe, friends, that as, as, as God uh, is helping us, he wants congregations. I'm not talking about this congregation or that congregation or that congregation or that congregation. God wants congregations who are willing to do new and refreshing things. With the time we have this morning, I don't have much of it because she already gave me a, a time limit and it was before, I, and she wanted me to stop before I started, but I told her I wasn't come, coming over here and do that. But we have, this time we have this morning, I'd like to talk about uh, 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 what God is doing and the new things he's doing in our life. A little history on July the 4th, we commemorate the adoption of the Declaration of Independence that was actually signed or put in effect or celebrated in July the 4th of uh, 1776. And you know that declared that the United, the, the colonies in the original colonies, I think it was about 13 of them, I'm not real sure. I didn't, history wasn't one of my strong suits. And don't you, don't you try to say none of those subjects were your strong suit, okay? No. I know, I know we're not gonna go there. But you have told me that before. <laughs> But I do remember the member that on the 4th of July, I can remember the fireworks. I can remember the barbecues in the backyard. But most important, I remember those words that I was forced to learn in school and that says we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that are among life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How many of you remember being forced to learn that and had to stand in the corner as I did because I didn't remember it exactly as it was written? And you know, you know what? Even in 2021, I still remember those words, but also remember and realize that we still have not completely live up to those words or those ideas. On June the January 1st, 1963, nearly nine decades after the founding fathers found this country, honest Abe, through God, who gave him a clean heart, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And what that did is ordered to set millions of slaves free, but it also made sure that in the future that all slaves would be free. Two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, the enslaved Americans in Texas uh, received word that they were uh, free from bondage. And that is where Juneteenth got its name. I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking about that because y'all have, have dealt with that for the last 21 days. Uh, let me say it this way. They should have dealt with that yes. in the last 21 days. And I hope they did. And you have been the pastor uh, that you are. I know you set a good example for that. Okay. Amen. Juneteenth is a day in which we remember the moral stain and the, and the, toll, the toll that slavery took uh, on this country and the longevity of systematic racism and, and, and inequality and, and, and inhumanity that was left. It also reminds us uh, of a, as a people how, how people who continue to, to pray and, and never lose hope can emerge as, uh, from their darkest moments with purpose and resolve. The celebration of Juneteenth, my friends, is God doing a good thing and a new thing. Today I'm reminded that God is, is a God of new things. Every day that I wake up, God has done a good thing. Not only has he made me able to wake up, but he also made the world able to continue to move around. I was, I, I, I was told to, to come by here this morning. Uh, 
I was told to come by here this morning. Uh, wasn't no man on the street that told me to come, but I was told to come by here this morning to, to, to tell you that God is a God of a new beginning, that God is a God that's doing a, a new thing uh, right here. I was told to tell you, my friends, that God, through his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit has our back. And he is not going to bring us through this thing without some trials and tribulation. But I will tell you for certain, if you trust in the Lord, amen? amen. If you trust in the Lord, amen. you'll come through it with purpose and resolve. Also, he told to remind you that we, we are different in so many ways. Some of us have no hair. Some of us have too many, too much hair, and some of us have false hair. But we have too much, we have too many things, and so many things that are different on there. But there is one important thing. The one important thing that we have in common, my friend, is that we were created by God in the image of God. And God does not make any mistakes. And while he was creating us, he gave us gifts the gifts of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. But most important of all, the most important thing we have in common, that God gave us Jesus, Amen. who we cannot lose even if we want to. Amen. Yes. God is not going to let us lose Jesus. I want you to know that God wants us to do something fresh and new in our congregation. He wants us to restore hope in the plan that he has for us. But keep in mind, church, God will not begin a new thing. He won't begin a new thing, Red. Until what? Until we forget the old. He's not going to put wine in old, raggedy wineskins. He's going to have to lose that. And, and you know who's responsible for losing that, my friends? It's y'all. My wife is sitting up here. She don't like me to say you all, but you all are the ones that's going to make that happen. Yes. Uh, yes. You're on a new journey. All of us. We need to, to change our focus and, and quit looking behind us and looking forward. If we're always looking backwards, we can't see where we're going. We can't see what's in front of us. Amen? Y'all got to help me this morning. If we, if we, if we don't, uh, we got to forget the former things and, and not dwell on the past. We must depend, not depend on where we were. We can't, we can't sustain ourselves on our victories that we've had. We must not allow our past failures to possess us. We must not live on yesterday's faith. Because yes. our yesterday faith, yesterday faith is not strong enough to get us through this. Yes. We gotta have a new faith, a new vision for what God can do for us. Amen. And more importantly, we need to understand that God, God, my God, will make that happen. Amen. The new, the now what for me is anticipating that we, uh, through God, can do something special, something amazing in the life of our church. I think the best is yet to come. And I can, I, I can, and I can, I can get excited about that. I don't know about you. How many can get excited about that? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Can you get excited about God doing a new thing in our life? Those who can't get excited, don't get excited. <laughs> I, uh, however, I can imagine. I can imagine congregation. I'm not talking about this congregation or this congregation or this congregation or this congregation. I'm talking about I can see congregations with the spirit of, of, of expectation that God is helping you to be the church. He wants you to be where I see more joy and more peace and more understanding and more confidence in, in God, where more lives are changed, more disciples are made, and we become 
uh, 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 known, our claim to fame will be to advance the good news of Jesus Christ. Friends, trust me, God is not, God is not, uh, God is orchestrating and everything that we do, every move we make, he's on top of it. He will take care of the details but once he knows that we're going in the right direction, then he will tell us uh, where we need to go. Friends, this is what I call when you do that, uh, walking in faith. Walking in faith, even when we don't know what's around the corner. God has given us so much. Let's not take it for granted. In order to use the God, gifts God has give us, we must see, we must see. I'm going to say it again. We must see. Y'all say it. We must see. We must see our possibilities as God sees them. We must do everything we can to build places that transform lives. This little alarm goes off, but I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> I'm going to turn that over there. So, no, you can keep your one. You can keep your one. I don't want you on, okay? You know, the Lord has already set in motion a new direction and a new purpose. And he's done it right here. Today, today, the first day that you guys are one church, Grace and, and University City, and, and it doesn't matter what, what you call the place. But today is the day that God has brought you together. He has combined uh, uh, a, a new direction and a new purpose for this combined church. Can you see it? I can, because I know the best is yet to come. The Lord has started a, a new thing in the ministries of Asbury and Samaritan a congregation. Can you see it? I can, because I believe the best is yet to come. I believe God is, is beginning to do a new thing and moving our congregation Grace and, and, and University City and Asbury and Samaritan in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a direction where we become more consistent and intentional about understanding the culture of each other in order so we can serve our community better and we can grow the kingdom of God. Can you see it? Yes. I can because the best is yet to come. God is doing a new thing. The question I have this morning is, do you want to accept God's new thing? If you refuse to follow where God's plan is leading you, congregations, you'll be doomed. And your church won't be anything but a shell, another building on the street. Friends, we have a great future ahead of us. We need to do great things. We need to hold on to God's word and promises for, for a future in our churches, in our community, and in our nation. The Lord has already done a new thing in our nation by setting into motion through our lawmakers a new direction and purpose for our country by making Juneteenth a national holiday. This new thing is going to cause people to think about whether they are to participate in this new Juneteenth awareness or they're going to reject it as being not necessary. In all due respect to all of y'all, this thing get my mouth, this is where my mouth can get me in trouble right now. With all due respect to all of you, if anyone, let me say it differently. <laughs> say it. I would like for y'all to consider if anyone here today 
has a negative attitude about the action that was taken with the national holiday and not the national holiday, but to make the awareness of what's happening in our country. You won't be able to see or understand what God is up to. They have such a negative attitude and a negative perspective. I would suggest that you need to work on your faith a little bit. You need to work on your relationship with Jesus just a little bit. This is not a political position, my friends. I'll say this again. This is not a, a, a conservative or a progressive or a, a leftist or a rightist. Or, it's, a, it's a Christian, a Christian, a Christian a perspective. And I want you to understand, for me and my house, I can see the new thing. For me and my house, I can see that God is doing something special. For me and my house, I firmly believe that the best is yet to come. Friends, let us not be victims of, of the rope of the okie doke. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Not only to keep our eyes on the Jesus, but study, study the word. I know you can interpret this any way you want. And you can make it say anything you want. But I think the thing that we can agree on, that we're all created equal, made in the image and likeness of God, and that he's given us certain gifts that we need to use, and if we don't use them, we're gonna lose them. But more importantly, friends, that we got Jesus yes. as our common denominator. Let the church say amen. 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 I didn't preach this hard for y'all not to say amen. amen. Dear God, thank you for giving me the courage and the wisdom and understanding of you and your son Jesus. Thank you that you have never left us and that you're not going to leave us where we are. Thank you for the promise of something new. Help us to fix our eyes towards uh, forward and participation of all that is to come. Show us what th new things you're wanting us to do and through us help us in the coming months to do your work. Holy Spirit, help us to, to, to see things differently through your eternal lens, more powerful than any goals we could aspire to on our own our willingness to join in the new work that you're doing is all that we need. Thank you, God, for your guidance and your wisdom, your constant love. And we ask these things in your son Jesus' name. And let the children of God say amen. 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 And amen. amen. That's my story this morning. That's my story. So y'all know I'm getting ready to sit down. That's my story this morning. And I'm sticking to it. Amen. No, I, I just don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. Um, yeah, you, I, you, you took us to church. Yes, that's get, uh, get your little ruler, you can smack my hand. No, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Friends, we come now to the meal that unites us all. I'm going to invite you to follow along in your liturgy. The table of bread is now ready. It is a table of company with Jesus and all who love him. 
It's a table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified. It's the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to the table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who've been here often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. I'm going to invite you to hold your communion element in your hand. What we're going to do is I'm going to bless it from here. And then when it is time, we'll all have the very holy ceremonial popping of the lid to take out the piece. If someone did not receive communion, I can already see Mr. Durham is in the back and ready. So if you need communion, just kind of wave your hand a little bit. And uh, Paul will come bring you some. All right. Let us let's pray together, friends. Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and juice to offer, which has come forth from the earth and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing so that we may know your touch and presence in all things. We celebrate the life that Jesus had shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Made one in Christ, and one with each other, we offer these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single living act of praise. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread, and in the drinking of this cup, We may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let us take the gifts together. For those who do not know, our communion elements were made as a gift. And I feel really bad for all of you that have had the holy thin wafer of paper because that tasted delicious. <laughs> but soon, friends, soon we will be having communion together again like we did before. I thank you all for your patience as we continue to have this holy meal together in this way. As we close, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing together number 519. Let us sing.
special thank you not only to Pastor Ivan, who brought us such a powerful message today, but also to my dad, Phil Cooper, who got a call on Tuesday because usually you would see Reverend Gail Robbins there. She broke her arm. And so on Tuesday, I said, hey, dad. So thank you for stepping in at the last moment. We really appreciate that so much. I wanted to invite up Odester Saunders, who has been a lot of the vision behind this work we've done the last 21 days to freedom. And I know she wants to share not only some words, but instructions for lunch, which may be more important than the benediction. So come on up. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have for Pastor Ivan, and I have for our pastor, Katie. Last week, I had the privilege of presenting to Pastor Diane their leadership uh, in this whole piece. I call, I talk with them when we started this, and they have been the, this has brought, culminated into something so wonderful. We're asking you to join us afterwards, but I'd like to give them a legacy footprint, praying together Juneteenth, 2021. And isn't it a national holiday? And all of this has come about. We have the social justice team asked me to do it. And uh, I have learned so much and grown so much. I present to you, Thank you. and Pastor Ivan, Thank you. I present to you. Thank you. And if I could dig in the bottom of my bag, but I have to present to you, I, I came across, I, like I said, I learned so much. I came across the shouts of joy, the sounds of weeping, and it just fit mm. our church right now. It's almost like joy and pain, you know? Mm. And I have one for you also. Thank you very much. It, it, it speaks about that. And everyone, please get a brochure. And I'd like to show Pastor Ivan what it says on the back. Now what? It's his sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Join us, please, afterwards. We just have a little something. It's warm out, but a little something with to whistle and have a little lunch. Pastor Katie turned it into a picnic. Okay, see you all later. Thank just you. come all out right. the back if you will. All right, receive the benediction. May you go encouraged, knowing that whatever has brought you to this place, God is doing a new thing. God is leading your steps, leading all of us forward. And while it may be scary, we do not travel this road alone. For your siblings are with you. Your God is leading you. And so for whatever comes next, may God give you the courage to take that step knowing that you are beloved by the Lord Almighty. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. One more thing, one more thing, folks. Uh, could I just have your attention for one more second? Uh, I'm so glad you're getting your voice because we have a special occasion today. We need to celebrate Mary Edwards' birthday yesterday. So let's join in singing happy birthday to Mary. Let's hear your voice. Yeah. Oh, okay. 